Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now today I want to talk about Central Asia, the old Silk Road countries which actually live closer to do than I do Moscow. Yeah, I live closer to Kazakhstan than the Russian capital and I live in a Russian republic called Bashkortostan in the city of Ufa which boasts 60 different ethnic minorities, none of whom live in their own ghettos and they're all Russians to the core. So now let's look at my neighbours in Central Asia and the fact that they're all members of the Central the Commonwealth of Independent States, the Europe, Asian in Economic Union and the Shanghai Cooperation Organisation. Now the majority of trade and economic relations between Russia and the Central Asian Republics are now focused on matters that are not typically discussed publicly, particularly in social media. And if you wish to avoid being a Russian propagandist by those in the US and Europe, you should not be talking about countries who benefit substantially from violating the anti-Russian sanctions imposed by the West. However, it's obvious to those who look at Russia's Central Asian neighbours that they've derived significant benefits from the imposition of sanctions, including a new flexibility comparative market openness and broader access to new geographic destinations. I mean, it's worth getting away from looking at these countries in the context of the past when Russia was seen as its primary influence via the Soviet Union in Central Asia and completely controlled them. Conversely, these states can now themselves have become a valuable resource for Russia's development and a diversification of its trade and economic ties. And this is how it was back in the uh, 19th century before the great powers forced Russia to incorporate the Central Asian territories into its empire. Now, I'll tell you it's worth it. A visit to Astana, Bishkek, Dushanbe or Tashkent in the autumn months, which I can recommend, I tell you, significant benefits like the conflicts between Russia and the West has brought to the development of the Central Asian Republics is very obvious. All the capitals of these Central Asian countries have benefited from the sanctions imposed after the special military operation, with significant improvements obvious in housing, roads and other infrastructure facilities. I mean, in 2023, for example, the region saw economic growth of between 5 and 6.5% of GDP, with a reduction of inflation and poverty. Now that's something that even the Europeans and the European Union would be jealous of. Now there's a number of reasons for that. Firstly, the Central Asian Republic's become a crucial element in the system of mediation between Russia and the global economy, from which the US and Europe have attempted to disengage. Now Russia has historically been and will continue to be the most significant economic and geological geopolitical, sorry, partner for these countries as well as geological, uh, which they have a natural affinity. Russia is the largest and most accessible market for their goods and services, so it's neither feasible nor desirable for any of those to isolate themselves from the market. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop them. You can do this by making a small donation, however small uh, as you like, by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking all of you just for watching because I do appreciate every viewer. Now back in the 17th and 18th century, Bukharan merchants played a pivotal role and facilitators of trade between Russia and Europe and the markets of the Middle East and India. Current geographic priorities are now evolving with notable shifts occurring in trade. I mean, for example, there's been a 300% surge in trade between Kyrgyzstan and countries like Finland and the Czech Republic. Yeah, believe it, it's happening. Bilateral trade between Kyrgyzstan and Germany in 2023 was up by 950%. Now, this is obviously a result of the conflict in Eastern Europe and Central Asian countries have now taken up their role as from being peripheral in the global economy to being vital in a way of uh, avoiding sanctions for Russia. I mean, the 
successful implementation of the plan logistics projects, including the transport corridor through Afghanistan, will further reinforce the connection with Russia, Chinese and the markets of Europe. I mean, it's of no consequence that some of these are being presented to the media as bypassing Russia. Because if they facilitate the connectivity between Central Asian countries, rather than linking them to the sea trade routes that are d predominantly controlled by Western entities, this will continue to the development of an independent global economic infrastructure. I mean, that is the objective that Russia is really pursuing. Plus, Russia itself will not remain on the sidelines. I mean, in 2024, the quarterly growth of transit traffic through Russia reached uh, was up by 40 percent, given the ongoing military political crisis around uh, Israel and the Middle East in Asia will continue to be the most reliable space for transit in the foreseeable future. Plus, the current global uncertainty is looking for more proactive revenue opportunities. The Central Asian republics have considerable talent in this area and they are positioned to be the most conductive in the realisation of their natural inclinations. I mean, one example actually is worth looking at. It's the new international trade centre on the border with Afghanistan. Now, three years ago, I was fortunate to see the construction process at the initial stage, and I'm now pleased to report that it's now fully operational. And the total area is 26 hectares, and customers can pay in pretty much several currencies, from rubles to uh, dollars to euros, whatever. A thriving trade in Russian, Uzbek, and other international goods. I mean, Afghan customers cross the border and they purchase a wide range of products including food, household chemicals, crockery, cooking utensils and other items. It's also worth noting that over the course of the relatively peaceful three-year period since the US withdrawal from Afghanistan, the local populations began to present a smarter, more well-groomed and cheerful appearance. I wonder why. I mean, the term is cargo centre is operating successfully in the vicinity. It's managed by a guy, private entrepreneur called Nadia Dazalov. Now, Dazalov oversees the centre with great attention to detail. I mean, he's adopted a much more disciplined approach than the previous operator, who had, shall we say, developed some less than desirable habits and friends. Now, the majority of the cross-border trade with Afghanistan is conducted through the centre, and it's now the situation where collaboration with Uzbek businesses along the border has led to a reduction in costs with intermediaries. As I mean, you can even send chocolate from St. Petersburg all the way there, and it's not a problem. But it's simply the ambiguous position of the um, Afghan government doesn't impede trade at all. Now, there is a desire to move forward and work more actively in areas rather than waiting for the return of the. European partners. Now the other reason of course is the governments of Central Asia are keen to leverage the increased attention on the region to their advantage. I mean that region going back to the days of Makinda uh, and that includes for Russia is in terms of its labour availability and the opportunity for companies from around the world to enter the Russian market circumventing sanctions imposed by the United States by using them and setting up on their soil. I mean, it's not clear whether the investment promises currently being made but are genuine, but there's a lot is happening. And th this enthusiasm itself is a catalyst for growth. Plus, there's been an increase in well-being. I mean, at the very least, it's evident in the major cities where you now see tra traffic congestion is a common occurrence. And that's led to increased consumption the opening of new production facilities and an expansion of the services sector. Now it's clear that Russia's neighbours will still encounter significant challenges in the future, largely due to interference by the US and its inability to stop meddling in the affairs of a country that should be of no interest to in them, particularly not as matters of US national security. I mean, it's in Russia's commercial interest to maintain the stability in the region to strengthen its economic presence. I mean, what would be the value of pursuing this course of action? Well, first and foremost, of course, 
It's to recognise that the countries of Central Asia are our traditional friends and partners, right? They're close to us, they're on the borders, in fact, I lived so close to them. And they see Russia as the big brother focal point from a political and economic standpoint. And this is particularly relevant in contrast to places like Ukraine, where there's never been a unifying idea. I mean, Ukraine's never unified until the Soviet Union put together. And in Central Asia, there's no levels of Russophobia like you have in Ukraine. And it's also prudent to recognise that in the modern world, no obligations are incurred without cause. And Russia has no outstanding obligations to its partners. It left them at the end of the Soviet Union in a decent state, and it's only Belarus that is now so is tied. Now, they're motivated, as in Central Asia, uh, of being caught in the crossfire of US secondary sanctions. And that's just the US bullying. And Russia's not interested in its, in its southern neighbours suffering economic hardship, so it will do its best to protect them. So it's therefore it will likely be called on to provide assistance in suppressing any inevitable outbreaks of social instability that will be instigated by the West in so-called colour revolutions that they've tried in Kyrgyzstan and various other places on several occasions. So it's important to be firm and engage in effective bargaining and secure favourable terms. But that may involve navigating the complex negotiations with local governments and other stakeholders. But if you could demonstrate to the market that you are consistent and confident in the calm times of foreign economic dependence, you don't want to be on the West, then the inner space of Eurasia has opportunities for Russia and the countries themselves rather than a threat. Now, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website by clicking on the thanks button. Don't forget the uh, to like and share and also the comments button. Please, please comment. Love to read them, love to respond to them and love to get them. Thank you.